Oh, Travis Wingood, so I'm going to be hurting when I finally get out running again after all the snow. Uh, looks like I may not be able to start running until next week. Yeah. So, I, I've been going over last night, uh, right before I went to bed, I was going over uh, a fact sheet for Mormonism. <clears throat> uh, there's a, a need when researching the church as an investigator. Uh, people should all be doing this. Uh, as a religious entity, uh, the church is able to let <clears throat> things slide and they're able to get away with things because it's a religion rather than an actual business or reality entity. And so it needs to be understood that when you make a claim, and the claim is supposed to be about what you claim is true, that you are in need of having evidence in order to establish the truth, the facts. If you can't provide evidence, <coughs> then you have to abandon the claim and just call it a belief. And people need to understand a belief is not a fact. It's not true. It's just a belief. It's a feeling. It's an opinion. And so evidence, physical, manifestable evidence. Did I create a new word? <coughs> and uh, if you can't come up with those, you have to state so. Now the church has been teaching us, being born and raised in the church, facts that are not facts. They're just claims and those claims have no evidence to back them up but it's the whole thrust of the church uh, for example uh, I'm still trying to figure out if the Book of Mormon goes under not fact or incorrect facts and I think it goes under incorrect facts claiming that it's a, an actual history document of the indigenous people of America. Because the categories that I have are facts, secondary facts, not facts, uh, and incorrect facts, and missing facts. <coughs> what the church is purposely leaving out. And missing facts actually belongs under facts. <laughs> Because I'm looking at the list of facts that I've come up with so far, and the church doesn't really acknowledge any of these. <laughs> they only acknowledge those that are not facts. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it's the first vision, Moroni, which was actually Nephi's visit, uh, and angels appearing, laying on of hands, giving authority and keys. Those aren't facts. Joseph makes claims. The church says they're facts, because Joseph Smith said so. But they're not facts. There is no evidence for such things. Now you can claim that, well, look at how the church has progressed so far. No, that, no. The one doesn't lead to the other. You do not understand what a fact is. And so the church is promoting itself without facts, without evidence for facts. We can't, for ourselves, read, ponder, and pray, and have Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ appear to us and say, Oh, yeah, I did communicate with Joseph Smith. This is his actual church. I ordered him to make it, blah, blah, blah. 
then it would go in the fact column because other people can see the evidence and replicate or recreate what Joseph Smith did. That's the difference. And, and it is amazing how the church has been so successful by going around telling the world opinions. Ah, oh, yeah, Joseph saw angels, he saw Heavenly Father and Jesus, and blah, blah, blah. But the church won't talk about the facts. For me, I'm all excited. I wish Joseph's real church was still in existence. Because these facts convince me to be a part of it. <laughs> I would convert and be baptized in Joseph's church. This current Brighamite church of facts, of non-facts? No, get me the hell away from it. I want nothing to do with it. Take your opinions and leave me alone. <laughs> and that's the weirdest thing of it all. <clears throat> Bizarre. I can't explain it. Having been Mormon, born and raised, I can't explain why the church won't tell the truth. Other than they're frauds. And that's why. So, let me list some of the facts about uh, the church. Uh, in 1818, Joseph Smith Sr. became a York Rites uh, Master Mason in Canandaigua, New York. That was his lodge. That's a fact. The evidence points to it. There's evidence for it. Fact. And the church won't... Nope, we're not acknowledging... You know, look on the Wikipedia page, the church still acknowledges Canandaigua membership. <laughs> they won't acknowledge Master Mason, and the church controls the information on Wikipedia. I don't know why, other than to suppress the truth. And they won't link it to the other people that are involved in Canandaigua at that time. such as Martin Harris, was an anti-Mason on the Council on Palmyra. That has bearing on the facts of the LDS Church. And so we know what the story is about Martin Harris. He helped Joseph Smith write down what Joseph Smith dictated to him as he translated the golden plates, which in his history says gold plates, so, again, <clears throat> the facts are completely different from the claims. And this is why I'm saying that the facts are exciting. I want to be a part of this organization that has these facts. 26 March, 1826. Oh, hey, right around this same time period, Junior is arrested for glass looking. It's a fact. There's evidence. Wikipedia won't show us the evidence, but it's a fact. <laughs> it's just unbelievable why the church is suppressing facts. And here's the big one. Many ex-Mormons already know this. Many Mormons know about it, but are afraid of the facts because they're stuck on opinions and claims made by the church that are incorrect or not facts. I'm not sure where to put the Book of Mormon in. <clears throat> I'll still think about it. But Sidney Rigdon wrote most of the Book of Mormon. That's a fact. Linguistic scholarship has shown Sidney Rigdon was involved with the composition of the Book of Mormon. A major role player in the composition of the Book of Mormon. Guess where he's not a major role player in the Book of Mormon composition? 116 pages. <laughs> hmm. Weren't those 116 pages destroyed by Martin Harris? Yes, they were. <clears throat> and so a fact, well, it's a secondary fact uh, concerning Joseph Smith's dreams and the replacement 116 pages. 
Uh, do I have that? Yeah. The Israelite Congregationalist Jewish Mystical Mysticism, 116 pages. Uh, it's a fact that there are dozens of contemporary books plagiarized within the Book of Mormon. Now it's little p plagiarism rather than big p plagiarism, if you know the difference. Because you have to copy a certain percentage in order to be considered plagiarism. They did not plagiarize other than the 1769 King James Version of the Bible, the enough percentage for these other books. That needs to be understood. Uh, the late war, maybe. Because if you go online and you see the comparison between the Book of Mormon and the late war, you realize, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so maybe that book, <clears throat> but others, no, it was just uh, little bits here and there. Uh, the names taken from uh, Charles Anton's publication, which is quite hilarious when you put the big picture together with the uh, facts, <laughs> is that uh, Martin Harris goes to Charles Anton, is this real or is this a fraud? Uh, 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 get out of here. <laughs> he comes back and destroys 116 pages. <clears throat> but uh, they then are introduced to this guy named Charles Anthon, and oh, he just revised the book and had it republished. Huh. <laughs> it's got a list of names. Hey, what an idea. So yeah, it's hilarious. The original story with the facts is awesome. I want to be a part of this church. Since it doesn't exist, I would like to restore it. <laughs> Anybody want to join me? <laughs> I know Mormons don't. And ex-Mormons, I mean, seriously guys? <laughs> you stop because the church just has the... Oh, we, we believe it's not a fact it can't be proven there's no evidence the angel took it <laughs> the plates are gone the angel took them it's not a fact you need the evidence you need those plates to establish fact and so uh, uh, it's a fact Harmony Pennsylvania is north of Pittsburgh <laughs> if you do not understand that fact you don't understand your church history and how Harmony, Pennsylvania plays a pivotal role in the composition of the Book of Mormon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, that's one that I broke. That I found out that fact. <clears throat> that whole Susquehanna River thing, that's uh, incorrect facts leading to secondary facts <laughs> because yes they did move to Susquehanna after living in Harmony north of Pittsburgh and it just happened to be after the 116 pages were destroyed <laughs> like I said the real story of Mormonism is awesome it's great <clears throat> Uh, it's a fact. The Smiths moved to Massachusetts next to Dartmouth. That's a college. That's a long-standing college for medicine. And it plays a pivotal role in church history. And so, notice I don't say that... that uh, I, I don't lead with the conclusion of why this evidence of fact, these evidences leading to facts, are connected to my conclusions. Again, you assemble the facts, and then you're able to expound on the big picture of what actually happened. And so, yeah, those are the facts that I've come up with so far. Uh, and then, yeah, secondary facts, and and missing facts which I'm recognizing 
uh, the first one does correspond with secondary facts, so I'm not. I got to be careful not to duplicate missing with the facts and secondary facts. So, but uh, yeah, I'll, if I ever get around to more fully finishing this, I'll go over it again with you. But this is just an introduction to help you understand when researching the church when investigating the church you need to know the difference between a fact that evidence has been presented confirming the fact and how you uh, use the evidence to uh, develop a theory test to establish the fact and America just doesn't teach that outside of the science fair project in logical communication it's just not taught here in America but uh, if you've got no facts it means you have no evidence if you have no evidence you have no facts and so the churches claim that Moroni rather than Nephi took back the plates and they're now mysteriously gone that sort of hurts your whole claim <laughs> uh, you sort of need those plates you need to be able to show people you know even though it's guarded and under glass or whatever you need to show the actual plates you need to have a publication of the actual characters on the plates so that other scholars can go over it and go, wow, that, wow, you found this buried in the Hill Cumorah right there in Manchester by your farm that you just happened to move to? <laughs> That's amazing. It's a marvelous work and a wonder. Then you'd be legitimized. But nope. Ah, <laughs> oh, the angel took them. They're gone. There's something else going on. And uh, if you just assume that it's a fraud and you just go, nah, not interested, and you disregard the other facts, you're missing out. <laughs> it's a pretty cool story. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd share that with you, what I'm working on currently. Mm -hmm. Not cooperating. <laughs> 